Hi, I'm Mike Barrowman. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Under the Waves. After the show, be sure and stay tuned for exciting scenes from other episodes. In the meantime, please take a moment to see the people who made this show possible. I've always wanted to swim like a fish. Every chance I got, I was in the swimming pool. I loved the water so much that I even won the Olympic gold medal. He's done it! Bannon's won the gold medal! But to truly swim like a fish, I had to enter their realm, the ocean and experience its many wonders and mysteries. From man-made turtle farms and two-foot-deep amusement parks, all the way to the depths of the sea, the scope of our journeys was as boundless as it was amazing. Come with us and explore Under the Waves. most important tree in the tropics. The mangrove forests are a true biological miracle. They provide a nursery for most of the fish we see around the reef. A nursery? You mean like where the mommies drop off the baby fishes every day? No, silly. A mangrove swamp is where baby fish start their lives. Exactly. Without the protection of these amazing trees, there would be few fish. And without fish... There'd be no seafood restaurants. Andrew, it's really important that you learn about these mangroves. If nobody understands them, they may not be around by the time that you grow up. Study, study, study. Sharon, that's why kids grow up so fast these days. I mean, all the study makes you old. Andrew, if you don't study and if you don't learn things, you may end up like... Where is Mike anyway? You know, when I was a boy, we never had kites this good. We had to make our own. Yeah, out of dinosaur skin from his caves. Hey, very funny, wise guy. No, out of newspaper. Newspaper? Wasn't newspaper carved onto stone tablets back then? Hey. When I was a boy, we didn't make fun of our elders. Huh, give me that kite. Okay. Ha. Perfect wind speed. Perfect direction. Very good. I should get at least 100 feet. You hold that. Now, I'm going to take off. When I yell, you let go. Good Mike. Good Mike. Pencils stuck in your nose. Actually, they are pencils. Mangrove pencils. Why do trees need pencils? Well, these pencils are actually seeds, and they grow into new mangrove trees. These are seeds? Seeds can't grow in the ocean. It's full of salt water. These seeds grow into magnificent new mangrove forests, and these seeds happen to love the ocean. Oh, wow. Hey, let's put these back in so that they can grow. Well, that's one way to plant them. Hey, what do you say you come on my boat and we'll fly your kite? Let's go. Yeah! (laughs) You know, your kite might fly with more vigor if it had a string attached to it. Hey, did you guys see that? It just jumped clear out of the water. What is that? 
that my Olympic genius is an eagle ray, and they frequently leap from the water to knock parasites off of their bodies. I wonder what that looks like underwater. So, Andrew, what do you think? Even Mike was excited by the spotted eagle ray. Well, I can certainly see why this is called a spotted eagle ray. Similar to the leopard on land, these spots help to camouflage the ray so that it's hard to see. You call this hard to see? Don't let that fool you, Andrew. Only occasionally do they show this kind of curiosity. Mostly, eagle rays are creatures that like to keep to themselves. But sometimes, they can be found swimming in schools. I'm so confused. Yeah. It's not known why they behave the way they do, but schooling may be a mating behavior. Here it comes again! Check out that mouth! Eagle rays feed in the sand. They root around for small fish, shrimp, crabs, and snails, particularly conch, one of their favorite foods. An eagle ray's mouth contains large, powerful jaws that easily crush the shells of any snail and get at the animal inside. In fact, take a close look at this curious fellow's mouth and you'll see what I mean. I'm sure glad they like to eat snails and not people. I'm with you, Andrew. Did you know the spotted eagle ray is a stingray? It defends itself with between one and five poisonous spines at the base of its tail. Oh, what a great day to fly a kite. <laughs> yeah, Mike, but when do we get to fly it? <laughs> Any fool could see it's very windy out here. Don't you think you should reel it in? Yeah, Mike, reel it in. It's already over the smelly swamp. Okay, Mike. Now, let me fly it. Uh, uh -oh. oh. Oh, it broke. That's okay. I guess it's your turn now. Thanks a lot, Mike. You're welcome. Nobody ever listens to me. Hey! Don't worry. We'll get the kite back. We just have to follow the string. There you guys are. What are you doing? Hi, Sharon. Um, we're flying a kite. We were flying a kite until Mike let the string out too far and it broke. I told them, but nobody ever listens to me. Hmm. Mike, from what I've seen, I think you should listen to Tani. She is right over 92% of the time, you know. What about the other 25%? Huh? What happened to that? Didn't even think about it, did you? Hey, I got some work to do in the sub. Keep in touch by radio, okay? <laughs> Very funny, you guys. <laughs> hey, I told you, if we just waited long enough, we'd find the kite string. Now come on with me, we'll get that kite. Okay, guys, I knew it. I knew if we just keep following this kite string, we're going to find the kite. It's been so easy so far, right? Right? I know we're going to find Mike, it. Mike, it's but... so hot out here. We're never going to find the kite. This is a very bad idea. Um, Mike, are you sure about this? Some kind of um, dark in there? Oh, it'll be fine. We Let's don't even it. have a flashlight, Mike. Come on, it'll be fun. We'll probably even see like a Cayman parrot in there. Are you sure? What are all these trees everywhere? I think they're mangroves. What good are these trees if they don't have any fruit? Hello there, young people. These trees, they don't have any fruit, but they can talk. Hello, sir. Hello, and what brings you all to the mangrove forest today? You know, Mike, this tree sounds old and tired. Yeah, Mike, kind of the tree isn't talking. It's a man. Tanny, shh. Tree, where's your mouth? And have you seen our kite? Yeah, I have it here in my arms. <laughs> tree, you're a tree. You don't have arms. Up here, stupid. Oh, hey, do you know? You sound just like this tree. That's incredible. Come on. 
Mangrove trees don't talk. That was me. Eh? Now, give me a hand down the tree and I bring you your kite. No, I don't. No. These worthless trees broke our kite. Mangrove trees are not worthless. The mangrove tree is the most important tree in the whole world. Whatever. No. You probably think that this is a stinky swamp full of weird looking trees and bugs, but the mangrove forest is actually really complex. What's so complex about a bunch of trees? The mangrove forest gives food, shelter, and protection to many creatures. Cool! Looks like a safe place for birds to live too. Mangroves also protect us from bad storms, hurricanes, and severe flooding. Wow! So they act like a fortress against the waves. They are the only tropical trees that can live in salt water. Wait, how do they breathe if their roots are all in the water? They have a special snorkel root that sticks up out of the mud and reaches the air above the waterline. Looks like even the most delicate creatures can find a home in the mangroves. Did you know red mangroves drop more than three tons of leaves per acre per year? Very careful. Who knows what kind of life we might step on in the mangrove forest? It's everywhere. Magnificent! A pair of nesting parrots! See, look! See, I told you that this was gonna be fun. <laughs> Professor, what are you doing out here? Oh, I'm collecting samples for my lab. For what? Well, come with me and I will show you. Hey, Professor, you got a shower in that lab of yours? Oh. Welcome, welcome. Tammy, please pass me that jug of mango water. Oh, we are going to see so much today. Today is a day we remember for the rest of our lives. Don't touch that! Sorry. The microscopic world is amazing. There is so much we don't know. We might even make a new discovery today. But what we do know is everything is vital to the ecosystem. Like making rain. And a nursery for fish. Mm -hmm. And even a place for wildlife to live. Good, Mike. Also, they protect us from hurricanes. Okay, is everyone ready? Good. First, we take a sample from the water of life. And then, we take a little of the water on mud and squirt it gently onto the petri dish. So, all I see is just mud. No, no, no. Look closer. Oh, just mud on your dirty fingernails. No, no, no. It's very small. But this amount of water is teeming with vast amounts of life. Well, how are we supposed to see it? Ah, we have my Magnum 5000 CX microscope. Hey, can I try? No! No, no. no. The microscope is very fragile. Whoa! I think I see a giant worm. Yeah, yeah. Could be some kind of lava scooping up food. But it's gigantic. No, no, no. It's no giant. It's a magnification. It's only the size of this ballpoint pen. I can't believe all this life is in the mangrove swamp. Hey, look. This one looks like a snail. Okay, but a snail so tiny is no bigger than a grain of salt. You can barely see a grain of salt. That is small. Now, let's increase the magnification by turning the lens. So, Ah, I recognize this one. It's planaria. Yeah. Planaria? Yeah, yeah. High energy creature like this. All it does is live to eat. Awesome. This one looks like a millipede. It has a zillion legs. <laughs> zillion isn't a real number. You look then. Whoa, it does have a zillion legs. I gotta try this. My turn. Mike? Be careful. I'm always careful. Yeah, careful is your middle name. <laughs> Why, thank you. 
This baby insect may have many legs now, but when is adult, only six legs and two wings. Yeah, no, I think we switched the slides. Hey, I see something. A snake-like creature moving slowly, maybe totally new to science. I'll name it a Mycosaurus. I'll be famous the world over. <laughs> hey, let me see. No, no, mine, 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 mine. Mike, it's only a hair, you goober. Huh? Oh, oh I knew that. <laughs> Professor, what's this double thing? Yeah, this one is unnamed. Many of these foam creatures have not been studied. Another totally unknown thing to science. He's probably teenage mosquito. All we know is, is that they are good for food. Double thing, I name the Micah Double Saurus. Tanny! Here's one I recognize from my science book. It's called a diatom. Diatom is single-cell plant that can move. Wow, a plant that can swim. Yo, this one's slimy. That's algae. These plants are the building blocks of life. Let's increase the magnification again. Cool, now you can see the individual cells. Algae takes light from the sun to make food. This process is called photosynthesis. This also gives us the oxygen that we breathe. So plants make oxygen. Correct. And food. Correct. And shade. Correct, Mike. All that life and we can't even see it. I wonder how Mike and the kids are doing trying to find that kite. Hey, Captain. Can you patch me through to Mike in the classroom, please? Sure thing, baby. Anything for you. Here you go. Hey, Mike, are you there? Can you hear me? <gasps> oh, did you guys hear that? Sharon, Sharon, did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Sharon's inside this creature. She's inside it. They've eaten her. Sharon, don't worry. We'll save you. We should gonna save Sharon. Sharon. I read you loud and clear. <laughs> Hey, how are things going with you guys? Super, you wouldn't believe what we're seeing here. Well, I'm glad you're learning. How would you like to come down here and join me in the sub? You bet, I'll be there in a second. Thanks, Professor. Hey, Sharon, what about us? Why don't the two of you take the kayak and go for an adventure in the mangrove forest? <laughs> Can you believe the professor let us come out here alone without any adult supervision? Mike, you are in a... Oh, never mind. I wonder what dangers lurk in these mangrove forests. Hey, Mike! Doc! Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, thanks. Wow, it's like all these trees forgot where the ground was. No, these roots go all the way up to the sky. Hey, what are all those little things? There's so many of them. I don't know, let me take a look. I don't know what that was. Let's go in and take a look. What do you say? Well, I'm still not sure what they are. Let's see. Maybe Sharon knows. Sharon, can you hear me? Sharon! Sharon! Are you there? Oh, I could be drowning. Sharon! Sharon! I could be adopted by aliens. Please help me. Sharon, help me, help me. Mike, Sharon's busy. What do you need? Huh, not too concerned about me, are you? Hey, look at that. I've spotted an underwater flying saucer. Looks like a kind of fluffy, tasty little treat. It's all cute and cuddly. I think I'm just gonna go over there and give it a little tap and see if it's alive. Don't touch it if you don't know what it is. Oh, come on, you babies. What harm could there be in touching it? It's so cute and fluffy. I'm just gonna reach out here and... <laughs> Mike, just don't listen. I told you not to touch it. That's a jellyfish. <laughs> oh. So this is the jellyfish that stung Mike? Big deal. It doesn't even know which way is up. That's pretty sharp of you, Andrew. But don't be too sure of yourself. What do you mean? These mangrove jellies are also called upside-down jellyfish because they face bottom-up. Like corals, they live in symbiosis with an algae that's inside them. The algae has to face towards the sun in order to grow. Okay, but they look so helpless. 
It's hard to believe that they can hurt you. You're right. Jellyfish are poor swimmers, but their tentacles sting and paralyze small creatures in the water in order to eat them. Oh, so that's why Mike got stung. Exactly. And that's why it's a good idea to look, but don't touch. Did you know? Jellyfish can even sting if they're dead, because their tentacles fire on contact. Mike, jellyfish will hurt you if you don't touch them. Uh, well, I guess I'll keep that in mind. Wow, there's so many tiny fish here. Sharon, all these fish look exactly the same. Of course they all look the same, Mike. This is another way that babies can hide. They confuse their predators. Just take out the magic ID plate I gave you, look through it, and then you'll see what they are. Okay, sure. Uh, I can't keep up. There's so many. I mean, just look at them. Swirling and twirling around. Exactly. That's the same thing the predators say. Odds are better for the young fish if there's more of them to choose from. Oh, so you mean they try and get their friends on the dinner menu so that they can live? That's awful. No, Mike. That's nature and survival. Well, I don't like it. Hey, there's a fish here called the Jack. I didn't know fish played cards. No, it's just a name. In fact, we're passing through a school of horse-eyed jacks right now. As adults, horse-eyed jacks are schooling open-sea predators that frequently visit the coral reef to hunt. You mean they grow up here in the mangroves and then move into the ocean? Yes, Mike, that's right. Hey, Captain, could you take us a little closer, please? Sure thing, Sharon. Going up... Notice their huge eyes. These jacks are active night feeders. So, horse-eyed jacks are night feeders? Um, I think we better get back to the dock. Okay, okay, I admit, I would have never thought there was so much life in the mangrove swamps. And what about you, Mike? Fine. Yes, I used to believe the mangrove swamps were just stinky, ugly places. But now I've seen it from my own eyes. I believe it. They are really important for the environment. Hey, Mike! Sharon and I have a present for you! Uh, 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 oh. uh. First, let's do a little test. What kind of test might that be? Do well in the review session, and the kite's yours. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Gigi. Let's show Sharon and Tanny who knows their stuff. They don't think we know anything, do they? Yeah, let me at them. Oh, easy. This is a spotted eagle ray. It hunts in the sand for its food with powerful jaws. Now it's my turn. Stand aside, caveman. Oh, how can I forget this one? How about you, Mike? The mangrove jelly lives in symbiosis with an algae that lives inside them. That's why they point upside down toward the sun. Yeah, and mangrove forests are super important and in danger. They are the home for many species of animals and a nursery for baby fish. All of this tiny life lives in the mangrove swamp too. These microscopic creatures are a food source for many larger animals. And it's hard to believe that these horse-eyed jacks also started their lives in the mangroves. We hope you've enjoyed learning about what lives under the waves. To learn more or find out about other episodes, check out our website, underthewaves.tv. See you next time. <laughs> Bye! Bye.